let's start getting race ready. So what that means to me is having a solid run program as well as strength and conditioning program in place. And how I like to do that is by kind of planning backward, executing forward. So I broke this down into four steps, which I'm gonna share with you today. Step one was, what's the goal? So obviously my goal is the BMO half marathon. And I took that a little bit further because I like to look at the big picture. And I kind of created three separate columns and loosely titled them biomechanical demands, energy demands, and resistance training kind of modalities or requirements. Um, and all of those are kind of for the sport. So then I just did a free flow. So what do I think are the biomechanical demands or what do I know to be the biomechanical demands of the sport? Um, and so under that heading, I put things like, you know, what is or what are the um, joint motions involved in running? And so that could look like something like hip flexion and hip extension. And then I added in things like, what are the muscles involved in the sport? So, or what are the muscles specific to the sport? And that would be, if we use that same example of hip flexion and hip extension, I might add in something like glute max. And then I also added under that kind of category or in that category, something that I called kind of injury proofing myself for the sport. So what would be the areas that I think would require maybe a little bit more TLC based on my personal experience having done um, events before like this and also my own training. So I've trained with me lots. I know kind of what works for me and what doesn't. So both for the sport and then also personally, kind of what are the things that I would think would injury proof me for it? And that might be things like, um, you know, adductors, um, like inner thigh, uh, calves for me are a big one actually to focus on like gastro and soleus and things like that. So the next category was kind of energy demands, and that is more the cardiovascular demands of the sport. And then the third column I had was kind of the resistance training modalities or requirements for the sport. And that's where I put in things like what I think I need and what I think um, is required of the sport. So in that category, I put strength, obviously. Um, but I need to be able to sustain that strength. So that's gonna be strength endurance. And then power, I'm gonna need some power because I'm gonna need some pop on um, certain hills or maybe sprints and things like that. So I not only just kind of step one, looked at what the goal was, but then I looked at what I thought the demands of the sport would be in those different categories. And that kind of is something that I used and looked back on as I went forward in the process to kind of keep me grounded in, in my programming. So I didn't get kind of caught up in like shiny object syndrome, you know, it happens to the best of us. Like this is a fun exercise or that's a really cool training modality. Um, I just kind of kept going back to that and that really helped guide me on my process. So step two, so step one, determining the goal. Step two was um, what are the starting points? So for me, the running starting point, I run once a week right now, sometimes twice. Um, so I run one, one to two times a week right now, about 30 to 45 minutes. So that's kind of like my base for my running right now. And then it also looked like uh, an assessment in terms of my strength to get an idea of where that is or that was. Number three, so step three was then taking all of that and figuring out what my time frame was. So I have 15 weeks to train for the half marathon. And not only do I have 15 weeks to train for the half marathon, I actually asked two more questions in this kind of time frame category. So I said, how long do I have to train for it? 15 weeks. Um, how many days a week do I realistically have? To put into my training for it and for me that's six and then how many hours a day do I have to be able to commit to the training and again for me that's one to three and the one to three is not three hours every day but I had to be realistic when I looked at this to make sure that this was a goal that was going to work for me um, that I did have some days where maybe I did have two hours available because maybe I would have to do a strength session in the morning and maybe a run in the afternoon 
And also on the days that I have to do my long runs, those are going to end up being a little bit longer. So, you know, two, three hours, depending on where I'm going and how far I'm going for. Um, so those were all things that I wanted to take into account, which then led me to step four, actually breaking down the program. So just to reiterate, step one was the goal. And then I also took it a little bit further and did the energy requirements of the support of the sport in the different categories. So biomechanical energy, and then resistance training. Step two was the starting point. So where was I at for my running? Where was I at for my strength? Step three was to figuring out my time frame. So how long do I have before the event? How many days a week do I have to commit to training for it? And how long do I have on each of those days to commit to training? And then step four is actually going through and planning it out. So in step four, I looked at it and I said, I've got 15 weeks, which is what we would call the macro cycle. So that's kind of like the big picture of it. And within that 15 week block, I have the mesocycles or the um, four week or sometimes a little bit shorter, or a little bit longer phases. So for me, I actually broke down those phases, those mesocycles into um, four weeks, four weeks, four weeks, two weeks, and one week. And apologies, one moment, please. And I had a call coming in. Nothing will interrupt this though. Um, so I broke those down into four weeks, four weeks, four weeks, two weeks, and one week. And that was my um, cycle. And then what I did from there is I kind of looked at the resistance training modalities I required for the sport combined with where I was going to be at in terms of my volume for running. And that's how I kind of determined the phases. So phase one for me, the first four weeks, so that first mesocycle in that big macro cycle was going to be or is going to be strength based. So knowing that it's going to be strength based, I was then able to go, okay, I know I'm going to be doing strength workouts. This offers me the structure that I'm going to be using to design the actual workouts because they're going to be strength based. I know the rep ranges that I'm going to be using. And then I also looked back on the kind of where I wrote down the biomechanical demands. So the joint muscle activity and like injury proofing to help guide me in my exercise selection on those actual workout days. And so that was my process in kind of laying out my training program and ending up here on that first phase. So phase one, four weeks of strength, and then I'm gonna head into four weeks of strength endurance, and then I'm gonna go into four weeks that's more power focused, and then I'm gonna do two weeks of maintenance and one week of just really easy mobility flow stuff on the um, week of the race. So that's where I started and I took all of those workouts for a test drive this past week and I will let you know next week how, how I fared and if I made any changes or if I do anything differently. <laughs>